Hello YouTube RJ. Well, on this video we're going to finish up the Cascode IF amp from Kits and Parts. Uh, in the last video I was talking about what I what would I do about connections and I made a decision. What I decided to do was I decided to instead of putting the three prong plugs that you had to supply um, that were optional with the kit, I decided to go ahead and take advantage of my little JST connector kit that I ordered. It's some of that cheap stuff from AliExpress that I talked about that I stock up on just to have. Well, it comes in handy. This is a case where it's come in handy. I've decided to use those. The board's not exactly designed for it. There are a few of them that the plastic's touching resistors where there's just not quite enough room for the plastic case around them. It's not a problem. It goes down far enough. Uh, these things are designed to be reflowed soldered so they can handle quite a bunch of heat. These resistors aren't going to generate that much heat that they're touching. I'm not worried about that. So anyway, what it does, it gives me a nice, you know, a nice connection to work with where I can plug and unplug our connections to use for testing. But also, if we decided to use this, we've got a nice way to work with it. Uh, we can unplug and plug. And we can always go back and <clears throat> use our desolder to take these off if we decide we want to do something different. But anyway, right now I've got them soldered on the board. I'm making up uh, with the kit, I'm making up the male connector, or actually this is the female, uh, plug. I'm crimping, crimping on to the little wires and creating these connections. So uh, let me get this finished up. I'll be back and then we'll do some testing on this thing. I've got the connectors on. I've got wires going everywhere here. I've uh, added some BNC connectors on very short leads here to keep the noise under control the best I can. And then what I've done is on the AGC out, I've got my little meter over here set up monitoring that. I've got uh, voltage coming in from my linear power supply up here. I used the linear instead of the uh, switch mode to keep the noise down. Got the Rigel DSA 815 spectrum analyzer hooked up over here. Up here on this screen, I've got my Sigma SDG 1032X signal generator set up. And right now I'm putting out 9 megahertz for the 9 megahertz amp at minus 40 dBm and a sine wave, no modulation. And what I'm, I've got hooked up now is I've got my signal generator running through a push button attenuator. The purpose of that is to be able to get down to lower levels than what I can turn my signal generator down to. This amplifier, as you know, is, uh, as we looked at on the, the specs over here on this sheet, if we take a look at this sheet, well, up here, we're looking for, it says about 80 dB a gain, okay? So we're looking for quite a bit of gain. So I don't want to overdrive things. Uh, I found out playing around here a minute that uh, this thing doesn't take much drive to really push a big signal. And of course, I'm limited on my spectrum analyzer unless I want to hook attenuation up over there to plus 20 dBm. So I have to watch that. So I just want to look at the uh, schematic for a moment here and take a quick run through of it. Okay. We've got our 50 ohm input. We've got some components here to, to match 50 ohms. We've got a J310 transistor as our front end amp component, a uh, very high impedance. And that feeds into a 2N3904, um, which Together, these are cascoded style. So you've got two real amp stages here. So the important thing I want to point out is you, you run the amplifier here. It comes through here, and what happens is your 12 volts is coming in here, and your signal here would act as a... This is basically being used sort of like a variable resistor basically because your AGC voltage which is all starts over here this is your amp going through here okay up to about this point here is amp the rest of this is AGC circuit and a mute and mute circuit basically what you do is you rectify with some diodes you use some components and capacitors and resistors to get you a voltage being derived from this section right here which is your output you go through your matching transformer is your output so you're monitoring the output level of the amplifier through here generating a voltage and that voltage drives this transistor this transistor is to ground being an npn transistor as you 
increased voltage here, you're going to be in the linear range and you're going to be turning on ground at more and more ground to this circuit here, which has a voltage being generated here in, in a simple voltage regulation scheme with a Zener diode and a resistor. You're getting five point something here. And what happens is it feeds over and gets put out as your AGC signal to be monitored. You can monitor it with a, a S meter here or to another circuit, or but it feeds this AGC back to to here into this transistor and to here, same setup into this transistor. And so what happens is the higher this voltage is, the more these transistors are driven on, so more of the amplification takes place. So you've got gain control devices going on here. So what happens is the more, more signal that the amplifier is putting out as the signal goes up, the voltage over here goes down. As the voltage goes down, it turns these transistors less and less on so you get less feed to the next stage. So that lowers the signal. So it all balances out to try to limit the output and keep the output of the amp pretty stable. So what happens here is in your AC off, if you take and ground this, this transistor can never turn on. So we ground this circuit, these tra this transistor will stay open. It will not be connected to ground. It cannot ground, even though the, the voltages are trying to make it reduce the output, it can't do that. So your AGC quits working. So at that point, you get your voltage from your little rectifier here, voltage rectifier, or regulator, I mean here, excuse me, regulator. You get your five volt, 5.6 volts or close to it over here and that feeds to the AGC so that keeps these transistors kicked full on and you get full gain. So that's how this works. Your mute, you either trigger one of these two transistors with a negative or positive signal and what happens is you can see here, if I, here's, a, here's the MPN side. If I apply power here, I'm going to fully saturate this transistor, turn her on. She's going to ground. She's going to do the same thing that's happening here. She's going to ground this AGC circuit so that the AGC circuit is grounded. When that happens, AGC signal over here will ground these transistors and basically keep them from, from turning on, in which case you're going to limit the, in, the signal through the amplifier. You're pretty well going to mute the signal. So that's, that's how this circuit works. Um, it's pretty high amplification. So let's get back over and let's do some testing and see what we find. Okay. So first thing I'm going to do is turn on power to our unit and I'm going to get set up here. Okay. So here we are. And what I've got going on is I've got my signal generator putting out 50 dBm, minus 50 dBm. I have it feeding through the attenuator with no attenuation on straight over to the spectrum analyzer. So we can just do a, you know, sanity check and make sure things are working the way we expect them to. And based on my signal here, um, I'm getting 40 and 50 minus 50 dBm. So I'm matching. So basically with the attenuator out, um, I'm getting 50 dBm, negative 50 dBm signal. Okay. Now I'm going to engage 20 dBm, 20 dB of attenuation. You're going to see the signal almost disappear. Okay. Basically it is. It's down in the noise at this point. It's still there. It's just down in the noise. So we have to remember we've got 20 additional dB of attenuation on the input to this amp. So basically instead of fit minus 50, we're inputting the amp minus 70 dBm. So we're going to now switch over, put the input output of the amp into our spectrum analyzer. And now we're going to put the input into the amp and we're going to get our signal. Try to keep this out of y'all's way. Okay, so if we look at it now, we're hitting about 3 dBm, positive 3 dBm. So what's that tell us about the amp? Right off the bat, we know that we're putting minus 50, reducing that 20 dB more. We're putting minus 70 dBm, and we're getting 3 dBm positive. So we have to, we have to bring the signal up 70 dBm plus 3. So we're getting about 73 dBm of gain, or dB of gain, I'm sorry, dB of gain. Well, if we look at the spec sheet, pretty close to matching what they claim. So I'm going to say it meets its requirement there. That's close enough. There's enough vari variables and such to say that, you know, it says about 80. It's about 80. It's 73 dB. That's uh, pretty close. Now, my question is, what happens if we start putting more 
signal in. Now remember, we have an AGC circuit. We should see it clamp it at some point and hold it pretty steady, even though I'm creasing. So let's let's start taking ourselves up here and see what happens. So I just come up 20 dBm. Okay. And I went up 2 dBm here. So we obviously got some AGC. E either we're overrunning the amp. It's out of the linear mode. It's, you know, we're in compression at this point. It's very, But it would be seriously compressed at this point if that was the case. Uh, I think it's more the AGC. And I think we can see that. Let's back up to 50. Okay, we're at 50 again. We've got about 2.93 dBm. Let's look at our voltmeter here. Our AGC voltage is 3.714 roughly. Okay, so I'm going to start going up. Watch the voltage. See the voltage coming down? That's your AGC action. You can see the signal went up a little bit. It's almost five. You're running about five now. But you see your voltage going down. What's happening is we're turning the transistors off to keep this thing from making more signal. So I would say the AGC is working quite well. I'm going to go to zero dBm. So here we are at zero dBm. We've come up 50 dB. We've only increased almost six so let's say three dBm so we went up 3 dB signal with 50 dB increase in the input so the AGC is working very well you see how low the voltage has got so I would say that's working great now let's crank this thing down for the next test we're 3 dBm I'm going to turn the AGC off okay so let's see if this works so turn the AGC off and now we're pushing 5.6, 5.7 dBm, and turn it back on. You can see it dropped to 2.79. So I'm going to take a screenshot with it here at negative 50 to, sh to have a, a, something to clearly show on the screen for you guys. Now I can show you that on the screen. So that's at 50. Let's repeat our experiment real quick. Well, first, let's, let's turn the AGC off right here. Okay, let's... Turn the AGC off. Twist these together. Okay. I'm going to get another screenshot. This is going to be a same input, but AGC off. Okay. So we've got that screenshot. Now, I've still got the AGC turned off. Let's see what happens if I start turning the signal up. See, as I'm turning the power up, the signal's going up. Now we're... we're we're a little over 10 now, okay? I went up 5 dB, and I picked up 5 dB there. So you can see the AGC is off. It's not trying to limit the gain of the amplifier. Now I'm going to disengage the AGC, and boom, it drops it back down to that 3, 4 dBm range. So that's working just as, as, uh, as it's supposed to. So the next thing we might want to look at is the mute. Um, I've got it set up with a negative mute here. I'm going to ground, and we should see a signal go drop off to, to nothing. There we go. That's the mute engaged. There's the mute disengaged. So everything the amp's supposed to do so far is it's doing. It, it looks like it meets exactly what uh, the specs of the amp is designed for. Uh, one thing I'll note is just how uh, low an input the amp needs. We can go down to, say, 50... 6 dBm, I'm still getting 0 dBm out of it. Uh, it takes very, very little, but you need to understand this 56 is actually 76 because I've got 20 dB of attenuation in the input. So we're, we're literally negative 76 dBm input, and we're getting 0 out. So it, it's giving us the close to 80 dB that it promises. I feel that it's working just as described. So uh, I'm happy with that. The build went well. Everything's working fine. It could be a interesting amp to use for IF. Nice to have the AGC to clip really strong signals. I'm not sure I want to use it in our radio. I still want to do a little research and a little testing. Don't have a lot more I can say about it. Hope you enjoyed this video series on this uh, kit. I think the kit's fine. I would like to see the surface mount components be packaged a little different. It makes it a little harder and time consuming to go through, but it, it's not that difficult. I think it's a neat kit for the price. When you consider the price, uh, I think it was $15. It's a phenomenal little kit. You get the toroids, you get all the components. 
you do have to supply the connectors but other than that i mean it's got everything you need to build it it's compact it looks like it's well laid out it's not that hard to do the surface mount they're all a decent size surface mount components you know there are 1206s i believe so i hope you enjoyed the build and the test and i think the unit unit does a good job we could use it already but we'll uh, we'll see when that time comes so you'll have to just tune in and stay with me and watch where we go with the radio hope you enjoyed this series hope you subscribe because you're finding the content interesting and somewhat educational and i'll see you in the next video